up and then down. Those are the two things that we need to pay attention to with gold, but not the two things we need to consider as to why the gold rally very well may be over soon. I'll explain why and how in this video as we explore. Most of the signs point to increase gold price in the coming months and weeks especially. We are in a hot election season. It's, we are also in a very, very warm geopolitical uh, climate in terms of uh, all of the activity going on around the world that very well could lead to World War III. Or not, we hope not, but uh, it's not looking good in some aspects around the world. We need to be prepared for everything, and not just regarding stacking precious metals either. I'm going to be refer referencing a piece here from Forbes that talks about weak fundamentals. That's right, with gold, weak fundamentals and the reliance on derivatives. So this gold boom very well may be at risk. Now, does this mean that uh, we're going to see a gold price collapse? I don't think so. I also don't think it's going to drop by a whole lot. I believe there is now a new, very, very high floor for gold these days, and it's likely going to be uh, $2,000 or above. Uh, it seems to me, at least, that we're done with the sub $2,000 gold, at least for a while. That's a pretty bold statement, I will say. Uh, and of course, it's a uh, it's a very bold statement considering we're seeing gold getting close to $2,700 an ounce as I record this video. Of course, and who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of days. By the time you see this video, the price could move in either direction. We just don't know. There's a lot going on. The gold market is complex. It's a big market. Um, but one thing is for sure, um, and it has been on a tear lately. And it's been going up so fast and so hard that it seems like a correction should be in the cards. And this is part of what this piece is about, uh, referencing what uh, one of the industry leaders has to say about it. Doubts about the strength and longevity of the gold boom because it appears to be in a to financial markets event based on trading and derivatives. Having been raised by one of the gold industry's best place observers, Ross Norman. The chief executive of Metals Daily, a London-based website and gold trading forum, Norman has a history of asking provocative questions about the metal in which he specializes. And that's good. I think it's ideal for all of us to be critical thinkers when it comes to precious metals of all sort and not just run into confirmation bias, conspiracy theories and the like. The reality on the ground is what the markets do and how they react to uh, and how they affect the price of the metals. Uh, right now, it's a very good time if you're a gold and silver stacker, especially if you started stacking before the big uh, run up in gold and especially silver prices in March of this year. Now, earlier in the year, he was the first to identify heavy duty Chinese private sector buying as a gold price driver with individual traders picking up where their government left off. And I reported on that as well, um, probably after he did, because I'm not quite as plugged in, obviously. But uh, one thing for sure, these Chinese individuals have been buying little small little one gram beads of gold uh, and that tiny, that little amount. Um, and it, it's been driving up and, and the government itself has encouraged uh, its citizens to buy gold uh, of all sorts and silver now, too. So it's, it's been an exciting time for, for the Chinese market, um, especially considering the yuan and their economy has been has been in trouble. And that's why they're doing quantitative easing right now and lowering rates. Norman's latest assessment is that and this is the most peculiar bull run and even harder to explain, according to him. The early rush by Chinese investors into gold started with physical buying and then shifted to speculative trading in over-the-counter forwards, futures, and options. And they bought in a massive size, confident that they were swimming with the tide. That's probably one of the reasons why we're seeing, as well as in the silver markets at the Shanghai Gold Exchange, the prices being what they are there, higher than they are in the Western markets. 
uh, the view of the traders was that they would win when interest rates started falling or they crashed the U.S. economy. So it was a question of when, not if. Now you think about it, that's a motivator to crash U.S. economy. Well, they're sorely mistaken there. I mean, obviously there's a lot going on in the U.S. that, are, that is concerning, but it's probably not going to crash anytime soon unless certain things happen all at once. And that could be the case. You never know. Um, the idea that the market is, is derivatives led uh, makes sense in many ways. Why else would gold rally to an all-time high? Just as inflation falls and quickly, the dollar gains, treasury yields gain, all normal surefire leading indicates indicators of the opposite. Well, I can answer that question, uh, but maybe we'll save that. Let's see if he answers it here later on. Uh, and that is the thing about the derivatives position. It can be largely agnostic or doubting of market signals. And one thing as well, derivatives positioning uh, essentially relies on psychology, maybe not so much on logic. That's my own interpretation in that. Uh, we'll get to um, some of the, one of the other reasons why uh, this big push into that market is happening. Other signs about the gold market being driven by derivative trading is an end to a rally in India, which followed a reduction in import duties, the absence of tra traditional buyers, Middle East gold buyers opting for reduced quality jewelry and reports from Chinese jewelers of a significant decline in trade. Yes, a significant decline in trade, and that's leading to um, uh, maybe potentially where this thing could uh, turn the other direction. In the U.S. and Europe, it is worse, Norman wrote. Physical gold dealers in Germany, often second only to China in size on gold coins and bars, has been worryingly thin. Remember just a few years ago, I reported about long lines in, uh, in a city in Germany, and uh, they're waiting to buy gold. And now it's in the opposite direction. And you would think it would continue going because, well, we got inflation. Inflation means a loss of value of, uh, of this dollar that continued to persist. Obviously, we are seeing an area where that's declining, disinflation, but prices are still high. And, uh, and it's still more than they would like in the event that they're continuing now with more quantitative easing. This speculative phase led by China has more recently been joined by U.S. traders with futures long positions at a near four-year high, creating a market in which it's largely unswayed by normal drivers. Uh, and that's just it. Is it an abnormal driver? Well, what is a normal driver in this day and age and in this economy? Norman is not forecasting a quick end of the boom, which has seen gold rise by 45% over the past 12 months to its latest price of $2,667 an ounce as of the writing of that article. Derivatives by their nature have often have a long leg towards expiry and as such, no immediate price correction is in prospect. And that's just it too. And that gives some credence to manipulation to the, yep, I'm saying it, upside. The opposite of price suppression is going on in the gold market right now. And that's how I interpret what Mr. Norman is saying here, which means that in a sense, you have a pile on, uh, you have a FOMO, uh, fear of missing out in the gold bull run. We've seen that in Bitcoin and in other commodities as well out there and pretty much anything. It's psychology, the psychology of the markets. Uh, which has a manipulative force in some extent because everybody just piles on. They don't want to be left out. Uh, and that's kind of what's happening there. But I'm going to tell you what else is driving gold's price, why I'm sort of doubt some of this. And there's two things we have to think about. And one of them we're kind of talking about right now, and that is essentially uh, the derivatives and the market indicators that we find ourselves a part of that, uh, that very well could lead to uh, a, a fall in gold price and real lack of demand, especially when uh, the festival season and wedding season is, is uh, coming to an end in India and Chinese, the Chinese uh, pausing their, their gold, uh, gold buying, at least to some extent, where you have Saudi Arabia continuing to accumulate. Um, that's another factor too. But, but the other thing I'm going to talk about at the end of this video so the derivatives by their nature that have this long legs towards expiry and so no immediate price correction is in prospect. Uh, that's a long way around saying that even though 
It really doesn't, doesn't believe this rally. I wouldn't certainly not short the rally at this point, is what Norman is saying. Gold will almost certainly go higher. And he would not be surprised to see $3,000 an ounce this side of Christmas. In other words, in this given year right now, we could see $3,000 gold. And that is quite a possibility. I think that's going to go up before it goes down. Next year, however, in 2025, could be a different story. And if a gold price correction takes hold, Norman will be able to say he was the first to ring a warning bell. I think the only, only way that warning bell is going to be rung if we see gold's price fall too much. In other words, I could see maybe potentially gold falling back to 25, maybe even $2,400 an ounce based off of this uh, information here. But what is going to buoy up gold? What is going to keep it, um, keep that hard floor in place? The fact that central banks around the world have accumulated gold at a record pace. The, the most uh, buying since 1967. They have more gold in their coffers at any time in world history. That's a big deal, folks. And until that gold gets uh, sold off or uh, back into the, to the physical markets, we're going to see gold propped up and stay uh, well above 2000 well above $2,200, $2,300 an ounce, I feel. And that is a big portion of the gold trade, what central banks do. The other thing I will say is that generally in the East and Mid East, gold is a part of everyday life, not just for festivals or seasons. It is a way of life that so much so that the Turks, they understand what, what's going on in their country with really a constant uh, you know, reset of their currencies, uh, constant inflation crisis there. And what do they do? And they will have gold, even putting it in their mattresses. And even though I reported on that a few years ago, likely that's still happening. They are still accumulating and have gold on hand in case of emergencies. And in the end, it's what everybody should do. Be your own central bank. So will we see gold fall? I think it's a quite a possibility. Is this kind of a an overinflated market in terms of gold's price? Yeah, I think so. Gold's prices are very high, but, um, you know, they're not to an all-time high adjusted for inflation, but they're pretty close to it. It does not mean it's not overvalued. I will say that. But in the end, no matter what the price of gold does, the value of it maintains in terms of being a wealth preserver outside of the system from which we find ourselves apart in an insurance policy. And probably the best because this price doesn't fluctuate as much as silver. Uh, that, in the end... You can be proud to own the gold that you have, and you can be uh, feel honored that you uh, uh, have a metal that has stood the test of time throughout history. It is indeed a valuable in and of itself. It is its own, um, essentially, derivative. It, it pays its own derivative, it, its own benefit, and, uh, and, and its own dividend. And that is, I think, invaluable. It makes me glad I've I started getting on the gold train, started back in 2017. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And by the way, before I leave here, uh, for those of you who are in the know, let me know how many ounces, how many ounces exactly do you see on the screen right here? Post in the comment section down below how many ounces are right here on your screen. And with that, I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video. And yep, I'm going to encourage you to please rate this video, share it, comment, and subscribe.